For today's video, we're going to take a look at everything that was included with patch 7.20. And I'll leave a link to the patch notes in the description if you want to go check it out. And the first thing I want to go over are the two new heroes and how you can get them. And those two new heroes are the Ice King and the Ice Queen. Now the Ice King is going to be a legendary variant of the Hotfixer subclass. So he's going to be a constructor and you'll be able to get him from the event store. Since he's a legendary version, I assume he's going to cost 2800 gold and he'll be available when the weekly store resets, which is tomorrow, January the 16th at 7 p.m. Eastern. We're also supposed to be getting a new hero called Ice Queen and she's a legendary variant of the Striker subclass, which means she's just like Striker AC. So this new Ice Queen hero is going to be one of the best heroes when it comes to farming and the way you get her is from the week 3 Frost Knight challenge, which I'll go over next. A couple of things I should point out first is that the Ice Queen is only going to be available from January 16th until January the 23rd and both of these heroes will be unique when the new hero loadout launches. So although they are reskins now they will be getting a unique benefit in the future. But yeah for now she's going to be a striker and you'll be able to get her from the week 3 Frost Knight challenge. And that new weekly challenge is called New Wave Holiday. This is going to have enemy waves send a large horde of the same enemy type at you. So you may see a lot of takers or a lot of smashers. Basically you'll see a large number of the same type of enemy. And in order to progress to the next wave, players are going to need to eliminate a specific number of that type of enemy. Not only will you get the Ice Queen Outlander as a reward, you'll also get this new Challenge Banner 3 which you can see here. And you'll also get some Snowflake tickets. And those are all of the rewards for the Weekly Frost Knight Challenge 3. It'll be available at the same time the weekly store refreshes, which is January the 16th at 7 p.m. Eastern. Like I mentioned in yesterday's video, the 14 days of Fortnite event has ended with today's patch, so those quests will no longer be available. They also added a new power level 128 zone in Frost Knight for high level players, and this zone will be available to players who have reached the end of Twine Peaks, and they'll earn a new reward banner for completing all 30 waves of Frost Knight in a 128 power level zone. And you can see what that banner looks like towards the right. Sort of looks like a crown within a flame. Uh, let me know in the comments if you all would be interested in seeing us try that out sometime this weekend. They also increased Frost Knight XP Gold and Ticket Rewards, especially at later waves. They replaced Transform Key and Schematic Rewards with Perk Up and Reperk in higher difficulty Frost Knight Zones. And they changed which Storm Shield Defense Quest unlocked the Frost Knight Zone, so players should see more appropriately leveled zones and i'm just now noticing that my frost knight missions are now level 100 before this update they only gave me access to level 88 so apparently they fixed that as well but yeah this is where the new challenge is going to be located they also included some more information in regards to the item reset feature which i'll go ahead and quickly go over uh, players can get a full refund of all xp evolution materials and perk up invested when recycling retiring or transforming an item that undergoes a significant balance or design change but this will not include re-perks spent to change one perk into another and it also doesn't include flux which is spent to increase the rarity of the item. So you won't be getting either of those if you do decide to reset an item. And again the ones that can be reset will be tagged as eligible for reset. And I guess I'll go ahead and show an example of what the reset feature looks like. Alright so in order to see which heroes or weapons are eligible you're going to want to select the more option which is in the bottom right. And you'll see a new option that says reset indicator. You want to go ahead and select that. And whichever heroes or weapons have this little white arrow pointing down means that they can be reset. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll over all of my heroes and show you which ones that we can reset. Uh, we got Bladestorm Enforcer, Dyer, Mega Base, Face Gal Jess, The Cloak Star, Swordmaster Ken, Raven, Archaeologist, Dimac Igor, Harvester Fiona, and Harvester Sarah. Guardian Bull, Shuriken Master, Sarah Hotep, the Raider Soldiers, uh, we also got Stars and Stripe, Headhunter who's a survivalist, the Pathfinders, the Alchemist Ninjas, uh, Thunderstrike Ninjas, another survivalist, Rescue Troopers, and is that everybody? It looks like that's everybody. So these are all of the heroes that are eligible for reset that are in our inventory. There may be some other ones that are in our collection book. And in order to reset that hero or schematic, you're going to want to select it and then select upgrade and inspect. And in the bottom right, you'll see the new option that says reset. Now, when you select that option, you'll see two more options that say reset item or about item resets, which is going to give you some information 
Basically, it says this item has changed and is therefore eligible for a one-time full reset. The reset will refund all resources that were invested in the item and return the item to level 1. This item will become ineligible if any further investments are made into it. Press continue. So that basically just tells you about the item reset. And the same thing applies to weapons. All you have to do is select the reset indicator. And for any weapon that has the white arrow that's pointing down, it'll be eligible for reset. So the weapons that are eligible for reset in my inventory are the elegant scythe, as well as the six feet under shovel, the pressure cutter, and the walloper, as well as the dragon's tooth sword. We also got the vendor tech slicer, as well as the Fortsville Slugger, as well as the Mr. Red Crowbar, and the Sir Hootie Club can also be reset, as well as the Socket Slugger, Vacuum Tube Axe, and the Storm Chase's Revenge, as well as this wrench. But yeah, those are all of the weapons that can be reset that are in my inventory. Again, there may be some other weapons that are in my collection book that can also be reset. And I guess we'll go ahead and reset just one just to show you all what it looks like. And we'll reset Recon Scout Jess. Again, we will be able to level her back up if we want to, but after we reset her, we won't be able to reset her again. So yeah, let's go ahead and reset her. Once you click the reset item option, it's gonna give you the option to confirm your reset. And it'll also show you all of the materials and resources that you'll receive. And you can also see that we're gonna decrease her level from 40 to level one. So yeah, let's go ahead and confirm the reset. And let's see where her power level, oh, there she is. So yeah, she did drop back down to 20. And it looks like we got some hero XP as well as all of those other resources. But yeah, that's how the new reset option works. Let me know what y'all think about it in the comments below. They also increased re-perk rewards from the following sources. Mission rewards are increased by 67%, perk caches 67%, and mission alerts for 55%. They reduced the re-perk cost for changing non-elemental perks by 40%, so it's going to cost less. And front-end crafting will now remove items from the lowest quantity stack first. Let's double check and make sure that it does cost less perk up. Alright, so yeah, if you do want to change the perks on your weapons, it'll only cost 600 re-perk instead of 1,000. Looks like you do get more re-perk from Mission Alert Rewards as well. They enabled resets for the six feet on the shovel, as well as any weapons that had damage resistant perks converted to armor perks. This won't apply to medieval weapons that were introduced after the armor update. And I believe that sums up everything I wanted to go over in regards to the patch notes. There were a lot of bug fixes that were included in this update, but I'm not going to waste a whole lot of time on these. Instead, I'll just put them on the screen so you can see them. And like I mentioned earlier, I will leave a link to the patch notes in the description if you want to go check it out for yourself. But yeah, just wanted to go over everything that was included in today's patch. And I also wanted to give you all a heads up on how you can get the new Ice King and Ice Queen heroes. Let me know which hero you would like to see gameplay of first, Ice King or Ice Queen. Or do y'all prefer that we just buy them and show the different skins that you get every time you evolve them? Let me know in the comments below. But yeah, that'll do it for this one. I hope y'all found the video useful and thanks for watching.